Well, welcome to this session um, of NAM Best Communities in Music. My name is Keith Hodson. Um, thanks for joining us this evening. I am actually going to just turn this over to Tom Kelly, uh, one of our educational representatives, and uh, he, he will uh, introduce our guest and lead us through uh, this session, info session on applying for Best Communities of Music. Go ahead, Tom. Hey, thanks, Keith. Appreciate it. Keith is our uh, Director of Education for Zeswitz Music, and uh, I'm sure he'll put his contact information in the, in the chat box. So if you need to, to tap into any of our professional development offerings that Zeswitz Music has, uh, he's your go-to. Uh, I rely heavily, well, we all rely on him pretty heavily to, uh, to make things happen from, from professional development. So don't, uh, don't feel shy to, to reach out going forward. Um, thank you all for being here. Uh, Happy New Year. I, I trust you all had a wonderful holiday. Some are still on that holiday. Um, <laughs> but tonight's session um, is, is going to be relatively short and sweet. Um, we have with us a, a very knowledgeable individual, uh, a, a dear friend um, that uh, has uh, offered her services to us. Sharon Bryant comes to us from the, the NAM Foundation uh, as a senior business affairs manager. Uh, she knows the, the, the application, the process, the ins and outs of, of how to go and apply for the best communities in music education. Um, uh, she always likes that, that Zeswitz Music is a champion uh, mm -hmm. for this particular program, and I'm very proud to say that some, well, a lot of you on this call actually have gotten the, applied and gotten the award, uh, and, and we're more than happy to come out to uh, to promote that at a school board meeting. I've done it, I believe, for pretty much each and every one of you, uh, some seven years in a row. Uh, Sue Baslick, I think, Methacton comes to mind that the superintendent says, okay, here we go again. It's a, you know, <laughs> it's a yearly thing. Um, but just know that, that we're willing to do that for you. Um, and uh, and we're, it's about your program. The bottom line is nobody's going to tout it better than you, more than you. Um, and I think Sharon will probably touch on this, that if you apply and you don't get it, that's firepower for you to go back to your administration and say, you know what, this is why we didn't. And this is why we should look at scheduling the Title I, the performance opportunities, the rehearsal space, and, and I'll let her get into all that good stuff. But, uh, but we're very honored uh, and, and appreciative of, of having her with us here tonight. Uh, like I said, it's, it's going to be short and sweet. Um, use the chat box uh, as much as you can or raise your hand, uh, chime in if you've got color to add or a question. Uh, she would not be offended in any way, shape or form that, uh, <laughs> that you kind of gave her a chance to breathe, as it were. OK, so Sharon, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, wow. You guys are awesome. Thanks, Keith. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for everybody who joined us. Happy New Year. And yes, thank you for joining us. It's seven o'clock your time, four o'clock like mine, so I have it much easier than you do. I'm so grateful and honored to talk about the Best Communities for Music Education program. Um, with NAM, as, as Tom mentioned, and the NAM Foundation, I'm a project manager. I've been with NAM for 25 years. Um, if you're not familiar with NAM, NAM is the not-for-profit association with the mission to strengthen the music products industry. Um, and the Best Communities uh, for Music Education is one of their programs to do that. It promotes and celebrates uh, the benefits of music education. Um, um, I see some familiar faces here, but uh, just raise your hand if you've received the Best Communities before. Okay, so most of you and some haven't, so that's great. So just for the folks who have not received it, just a broad overview. Um, it's a long-standing program of the foundation. This is our 24th year. Um, some of the schools and districts have received it um, that many years, 24. I think Wayne uh, wow. might, might be one of those, if not uh, 22 at least. I know he's, he's, a, he's a rock star um, and his district is a rock star. Um, it's a national award program that recognizes and celebrates schools and districts for their commitment and support of music education. The project serves as a catalyst to rally and expand music education programs and gain community support and funding for music education. In 2022, we awarded 738 districts and 80 individual schools. Um, we have two uh, awards. 
One is for the districts, and that's the Best Communities for Music Education Award, and one's for individual schools, whether that's a private or a charter or um, a school that wants to apply on just the school level. Maybe the whole district's not ready to apply, but a school might be ready. So that's for the Support Music Merit Award. Um, we only accept one application per school or district. So we encourage you to work together as a team and designate a team member to complete and submit the application. It is a comprehensive survey. It does take some time. Uh, once you collect the data, it does take between 35 and 45 minutes to complete the online survey. The application period is October through January 31st. So the deadline is approaching and the winners are announced in April. And the time period between January 31st and the time we announce the winners, that's when our researchers at Kansas University are analyzing the data and crunching the data. And then we have to get the list prepared and all the promotional materials. So there is that time period in between. So some of the material uh, or required information that we measure and collect, there are baseline information that we collect year after year, and that is um, demographics, teacher student ratio, participation rates, the music ed and fine arts requirements for graduation, teacher qualifications, standards for assessing music ed, facilities, budgets and support for your program. Now, each year we do refine the survey. We make adjustments depending on the, the climate, um, but those baseline questions are year to year. So that should help um, when you're collecting that data. So if you did the survey the year before, you would have that information. And some of the benefits like uh, Tom mentioned, this is your time to shine, to create visibility for your community, your program, and to say, hey, we're over here. This is a great program, but it's also a great time to audit your music program, to collect the information, knowing the numbers of your program. And when you're talking to those decision makers is so important when you're asking for funding. Um, it's a great tool to build relationships within the district. You might not be talking to the other uh, music teachers in another building or your district administrator. So when you're completing the survey or collecting that information, you have to talk to those people. So it's just a great way to build relationships within the district that you might not already have. Um, it offers the national visibility that we talked about. It reminds everybody that the music program is important. Community recognition, it's in the name, um, community pride. It's about the community, not just your district and your school. It's a way for everybody to shine. It's a program validation of your school and district support in music education. Again, use this award to talk to those decision makers. Remind them that it's, it's important that we continue this, this program. You can't, it's hard to cut a program when you have an award attached to it. Um, how to complete the survey. Uh, number one, it's an online survey. It's at our website and I'll put that in the chat and we can send it around afterwards. Um, at the nanfoundation.org slash BCME. But first we ask that you and we encourage you to download the survey PDF. That way you can become familiar with the data that we are requiring. And then ass assign a team, team member that's going to be the person that's gonna be um, collecting the data and completing the survey. And then just complete the online survey by the January 31st deadline. That's, that's uh, pretty much it. I know that sounds easy. That's not really that easy, but that's because I know your soup fall is such a busy time of the year. You're recruiting, you're doing your uh, recruitment and concerts, you're doing your holiday concerts, um, but we're hoping from October through January 31st, that gives you the time. But if you don't have time this year, we still encourage you to download the survey PDF and get familiar with the process and the questions that we ask. So maybe next year you can um, complete the survey and participate and evaluate your program. Where are you? Where are you at this time? And finally, I just really thank you. I thank you for connecting with your kids and educating your kids and, and being music educators. You're doing the work and this is just our way of celebrating you and putting the spotlight on your programs. Awesome, so, awesome thank you. share. <laughs> 
I, okay, I've got a, a couple questions. You, you uh -oh. referenced. <laughs> actually, I'm going to put Wayne on the spot. I've I've, I've heard from some districts. Wayne's like. Um, I've heard. Well, no, we're not going to do it every year because it comes commonplace. Now, Wayne, you said, or Sharon said that you've received this thing twenty some years running. What 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 are the benefits of of that doing it year after year? Do you, what what are your takeaways that that your program has gotten because you've done it year after year? Well, we're a Title I district in Connecticut. We're also considered an alliance district, which means we're one of the 30 underperforming districts. Mm -hmm. um, what this has done for us is it's given us instant credibility in administrators' eyes and Board of Ed mem members' eyes and community members. Um, like, yeah, we've won it 22 times and it wow. has saved positions for us. It has helped us gain positions. Um, with ESSER money, we use that award as a part of all our grant writing proposals. And we've probably spent 400, 500 grand just on music in the past three, four years using ESSER money, but the best communities was a big part of it. Um, we promote it within the town. I have um, posters made for every building. We put one in all the schools, board of ed office, city hall, the mayor's office. Wow. Um, the best thing was the flags. As, as crazy as it sounds, Sharon, those little flags, I put when I walked around and every administrator put them on their desk, went into the business office, put one in his bookcase. I mean, it was fascinating how that little flag meant more to them than anything else. Um, okay, yeah, where, we, are the, where are these we're flags and why don't I know about them? I'm sorry. <laughs> <Okay. Rob Flame. laughs> so we, in, in uh, April, when the awards are announced, we circulate a toolkit to all the winners. So it's just oh. an easy way for the winners to promote their win and celebrate their win. So in the toolkit, there's the press release templates, there's a certificate templates, posters, banners, social graphics. You can do just, you can make it as simple or as not simple as you want. Some people have created billboards on highways and banners throughout the town or posters, or like you do, you, you go to all the schools and you do presentations at the board meeting and it's wonderful. I, I love it. I love the partnerships between the, the music store and the, and the district. Um, but in, in every May, NAM had an advocacy fly-in. We would go to Capitol Hill and we would deliver this good news to your members of Congress. And we'd say, hey, here's a list of all the districts and schools that have received the best communities. And we would deliver them a de desktop flag and I will circulate a picture of that as well. And, um, and we, our hope was that they would then send letters or proclamations or celebrate the schools and districts. And a lot of them do. So if you've received anything from your representatives, that's why. Um, the last two Mays, we weren't able to do this, but we still send the information out to them. So Wayne saw these flags <laughs> and he asked, asked about them. So we, we had some left over. And in the toolkit last year, you can purchase flags on our store and you could buy them for your district or your school. Or so, your music, or your, your preferred music vendor could help or, you out in purchasing those flags. Just, absolutely. just say, and I, I knew about the toolkit, but I didn't know about the flags. That's the flags. brilliant. Yeah, so yes. you can purchase these flags in different sizes. So you can do a little desktop flag or you can Perfect. do a bigger one. And I'll, I'll circulate that link so you can purchase them too. But awesome. yeah, so every members of Congress get a little flag. And I mean, we've been doing this for several years. So sometimes if you go on Capitol Hill, and I don't know the rules anymore if we can even go into their offices, but you would see it, you know, a couple of years behind them. They love they love those little flags. Like Wayne said, they love those little flags. <laughs> Wayne, thank you, thank you so much for sharing that. I, again, the, there is value to it, and obviously, you're you're getting a lot of bang for your buck by going that that extra mile. Um, that that's that's brilliant. I didn't know about the flags. I have. It, it was uh, a new addition. It was a new addition last year. <laughs> okay. Thanks to Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it's awesome. Um, okay, another question. Um, you mentioned you can do the application by school, um, not or school district. I know that uh, Matt Ramage, uh, who's who's on with us tonight, is in a very small um, 
private institution, if you will. It's not necessarily a charter school, but it's a standalone mm -hmm. uh, building. Um, you had <laughs> thanks, <laughs> Matt. Like, yes. <laughs> um, and and he's a, he's a very hard worker, and uh, and he's kind of new to this particular building. And I thought, ah, oh, what, what a perfect opportunity. Are, are there other challenges for a smaller institution in, in this application process or? No, the survey is just a little different. So he would complete the support music merit award survey. It's just a different um, that's the smaller link. one. It's the smaller one. And um, that's why we created it. It wasn't, it's not as longstanding. I wanna say in 2011, we started the school survey and it was for situations like this. Perfect. We wanted to, we did not want to exclude schools or private schools or charter schools. We wanted to give them the same opportunity to be recognized yeah. for the great work they're doing. Awesome. So that PDF is also on the landing page. So Matt, you can download that PDF, get familiar with the questions. They'll be slightly different. And uh, the link will also be there. <laughs> no. uh, you're, very, you're very welcome, Matt. <laughs> I thought you'd give us another thumbs up, but that's okay. and you get the same you get the same uh, toolkit. It's just different branding, so it won't say best communities. It'll say support music merit award. <laughs> so awesome, awesome. If you receive okay. the award, you get to celebrate. <laughs> All right, last question, and then I'll I'll, I'll <laughs> shut up. Um, you had said that the application process year to year there are some tweaks and changes to it, but is is the hardest year the first year? Probably it's going to take you the longest because you got to complete the entire survey Got it. and you got to find the data and you might not be familiar with the data. So you, that's why I recommend working with the school administrator or somebody in the district office. They'll have that information on the stats or the student population. They'll have that information at their finger, at their, at fingertips. their fingertips where right. you might not. I, I mean, I even, do it as an example. And some of that information is on my child's uh, district website, but some of it's not. So I would have to contact because gotcha. I, I, I go through the process myself because I want to be able to understand. And I couldn't find all of it on the district website. So I would have to make the phone call. Oh, very good, Nancy. Thank you. Our data just came out and we're doing the app next Friday during afternoon in service. Awesome. Oh, I love that. Thank you. That's wonderful. That's a great okay. idea. Uh, very collegial. Everybody kind of gets their, their, their hands, hands dirty with it. That's, that's awesome. All right. For, for those that have also done this uh, application process, Sue or Kristen uh, or Dave, like how did you get not pushback, but when you approach them to say, hey, we need this information, did they go, well, why? Or, or did you approach it from, hey, we're applying for this awesome best communities for music education, you know, award, and I need your help. I mean, did, did you, how, how did that all come about? Maybe you can share some, some detail. Yeah, I can, I can say some. Um, no, they, they were, they were more than welcoming. I mean, I, I had a lot of the information kind of saved already. Um, I took it over from uh, the former department chair, and he gave some of that information as well. But it does change a, a little bit year after year. So, you know, if anything, it just opened up the conversations. Um, you know, in our, we have a, a supervisor and then, you know, the assistant superintendent. And there's a chain, but, um, you know, between them, it kind of just keeps the conversation going. Uh, and then even after we, we win, We've won the award, you know, you get the toolkit and it's it's a great email to send to, to the whole cabinet, to the whole staff, you know, and then again, you copy the music teachers on there and then the principals are talking to the music teachers and it, it just opens up a lot of conversations. Uh, we're always great about promoting our own program, but when the principal can say, hey, we're, we're, we're one of these schools and, you know, you educate them about it, um, they're, they're, they're proud about it. So, uh, yeah, the first year kind of that I did it was was harder, but each year it just gets easier and easier. Um, but again, it just opens up the conversations as well. Awesome. Awesome. Anybody else? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, my... 
Sorry, my, my internet is real weird. It's very unstable. <laughs> she um, lives, lives in the woods. I do. <laughs> Can I just share a little something that just happened for us? Um, we have a new high school band director at, at my school district and a new principal. And we are trying very hard to revamp the scheduling at the high school because it has been very detrimental to our program over the past years and haven't have not had any success. So we decided we, you know, try this new principal and and see if we could get a, a change made. And we, of course, touted our award. Well, Nancy, you froze. Right, right in the. We'll hear her back. Oh, now, now oh, there you go. Back. You're back. You Can froze back? after touting your award. Yes, so so we did, and we were pleasantly surprised to hear that he is considering a change in the schedule for us. It's not quite all that we wanted, but it's a little a little victory for us um, for next year. And I want to thank Nam because I think that did help sway his his thinking about the program. I mean, he seems very open to our program to begin with, but Nam certainly helped. <laughs> no, no, you did the work. Thank you for sharing that information. Yeah. I think for, for us, it's given our program a, a higher level of respect across all of the opportunities we offer in our district. And uh, to me, that's been, to me, that's really important. Uh, we were very fortunate during the pandemic. We were pretty much able to run as scheduled. I know a lot of school districts in Pennsylvania, I, I, I teach outside of Philadelphia, really kind of had to shut their programs down during the pandemic. And we were able to keep going without question. And I think part of that really was because we had been, by that point in time, we had been a three-time recipient of the NAM Award. And I explained to people that if, in order to continue receiving this award, our program had to keep going. You know, we just couldn't shut it down because, you know, and we did the best that we could. And I really think, like I said, I think I think receiving the NAM award has has given our program a much higher level of respect, uh, particularly with our superintendent of schools. When we received it last year, the very first message that I received was first of all from our um, our public relations person saying congratulations and could you please tell the gentleman from Zetswitz that we would like him to come to a board meeting as soon as possible. <laughs> Tom was gracious enough to do that. And we really appreciate that. I really think it is definitely worth the effort. And yes, you are right. The first year is a little bit difficult um, to put it all together. I'll be honest with you. The first year we did it as a differentiated supervision project. There were six of us who worked on it. We looked at the survey, we split it up um, and assigned everybody who was on the team a couple of questions to to do research for and by doing it that way all of the data was submitted to me i'm the department coordinator in my district and then i was able to just complete the survey made things a whole lot easier i think if you haven't done the survey before and you're concerned about community music opportunities because there are some questions about that you know what kind of opportunities are available for your students outside of school ask your students what they are doing music wise outside of school and i think you would be very surprised to hear where they are making music outside of school. And you can use that to add to your application. <laughs> wow. That's, Thank you, Susan. That's, that was wonderful. <laughs> that's brilliant. Like Garage Band, or, or, or they're playing at a cafe, or they're going to Borders and putting a little a trio, or they're playing a, a, a wedding, or they're something. That's, that's brilliant. Well, I was concerned when we first, when we first took a look at the, when we first took a look at doing the survey, I was when I looked at it, I was concerned about our younger students and whether or not they were doing anything outside of school music wise. And in talking to them, I have a lot of students from a lot of different cultural backgrounds. And I found out that a lot of their um, outside of school cultural activities are providing music making activities, dance activities, things along those lines. Hmm. And to hear that and to realize that, yes, they are making music outside of school. I think really kind of helped strengthen our application as a community as a community because we were able to say here's what's happening in our community that our students are able to do that's awesome totally awesome 
Wayne, you raised your hand. Was there a question or? No, another benefit that we saw was we have like a lot of districts, administrative turnover two, three years in a row, you know, schools, either it's principals, um, superintendents. What this award has done for us is we put it on all the material that goes out for those positions. So they know when they're applying for a position in our town that we've won this award X amount of times. So they have a notion already coming in saying, okay, are you music friendly or else this isn't going to go well for you because of that award. So every time the new superintendent or assistant superintendent or principals, it's plastered on all that stuff. So in turn, when they come in, they want to start making all these changes like most new administrators want to do. They take a step back and go, well, okay, music we can't touch because of the award. So that that has helped. And then when it comes for budget issues and um, board of ed meetings, I've had community members come up and speak on behalf of music and I never had their kid. They never had a kid in music at all. They just go, well, we've won this national award 20, 22 times. How dare you do this? And then the last, did you have a child? He goes, no, but we see the band on Memorial Day or we see the string quartet from the middle school at the nursing home, you know. So there's a lot of benefits to the word that, you know, go far beyond just putting something on the wall. Interesting. Thank you for sharing. We've had um, real estate agents uh, send us emails letting us know that they use it to um, get clients to move to their towns. You want to move here because the school district is right. a nationally recognized blah blah blah. It's it interesting, Wayne. You you had mentioned the the turnover in in administration. Kristen, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the floor <laughs> here because I know that you've kind of been through that over the last three or four years with a lot of changes. Yes. But you've managed to be able to stay ahead of the curve. Has this been a something beneficial that you've used or? Yeah, I think so. I think it just gives us so much exposure for all those brand new people just coming into the district that don't know anything, that don't know anything about it. And um, even the simple fact of you presenting at the school board meeting where all of those brand new administrators meet the music staff face to face and, um, you know, the school board gets introduced to all of those teachers, you know, that that says a lot. And I think um, it's really been helpful. Awesome. Thank you. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but you yeah. have been when Wayne said the <laughs> turnover, I thought, oh, Potsgrove, perfect <laughs> example had of so much turnover. It's it's kind of scary, actually. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, so I, I think, you know, this really gives us exposure for the, all think, the people coming in. Yeah, I think Margaret's shaking her head too. I think you've been in the same boat there too, haven't you? Yeah. You're mute. And, uh, yeah, definitely. And I also, I agree with Kristen and um, Sue Baslick's comment about the community music. Cause that's, I think uh, things, things that we've gotten stuck on before. That we weren't sure how to proceed with that. I mean, we have the Red Hill Band and things like that, because that's what we were thinking of. But I like, um, yeah, a different perspective on that. It's really it's good feedback for, for me um, on how to, as we move forward and when we refine the survey. Well, a lot of our, Sharon, a lot of our school districts, as, as Sue mentioned, are very culturally diverse. And it, 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 can, it spans the gambit from, you know, I won't use names, but and and what those cultures do and how they use music or dance, I guess it's kind of one of the same uh, within their, you know, their weddings, their social gatherings or, or whatever have you. I think there's more to it than that. But yeah, that's that's brilliant. Awesome. Absolutely. And we can give examples so people don't get hung up on questions like that. You know, so cool. I appreciate I appreciate the feedback. All right, flags. It's it's easy. It's not easy in the first time you do the application, but it's good. Um, Wayne did it for all those years, and he's gotten a lot of mileage out of it. Private schools. I mean, I'm, I got any, anybody have any questions for Sharon? Go ahead, Matt. Oh, 
my that that's my hand over your your name. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Whoopsie. This is a great group. <laughs> ah, Mike Arena, education representative extraordinaire, has joined the ranks. He's hey everybody. <laughs> Good evening, sir. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Questions, comments, you, you have the guru right here. <laughs> I'm happy to circulate all the information I talked about in bullets and follow up. Sharon, I got a quick question. Oh, okay. <laughs> if it said something about if we won it last year and there's no significant changes, we don't have to fill out the whole thing this year, just check right. that off. And then I would do the supplemental at the end or something. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. I probably should have mentioned that right from the beginning. So there is something new. Thank you, Wayne. <laughs> new for more, this year. We're more to start. <laughs> more to start. We are, we understand that um, life is, is uh, challenging. And so just like in 20, 2020 for the survey, we wanted to make the process I don't know, easier is the word, but not as complicated for, again, for people who haven't completed the survey before, they do have to go through the whole comprehensive survey. We need that baseline information because we have nothing to evaluate you on from before. But if you received the award in 2022, there is an option and there's been no significant changes in your program. You have the option to check a box and say, I'd like to use my data from last year. And you will only um, complete the supplemental survey, which is just a few questions about kind of like recruitment, what's going on, how, how are you engaging students now? Just like you mentioned early on in the call, Tom, about how seniors are kind of playing at ninth grade level those are the, that's the kind of information we're asking for in the supplemental survey. So if you completed the survey before, like if most most of this, the folks on the call, you have the opportunity to check that box and and say, please use my data from last year and just complete that supplemental questions, which I think might be 10. There's there's not that many. OK, thank you. I just wanted to clarify that. Yes, yes. And I should have mentioned that right from the beginning. <laughs> I was just so excited to talk about everything else. So I appreciate that. That was like the most important part of this call. <laughs> so Aaron, I appreciate, I appreciate Aaron, you, you. You may have stated this in the beginning, but maybe it'd be good to, to repeat it. Um, forgive me if you, if you already covered this. Uh, if, if people don't get it, um, you, you had mentioned before we actually let everybody in about the feedback that, that you get and how you can use that to um, you know, uh, advocate for your program. So yeah, we've had people in the past, now we don't automatically give feedback because there's just, you know, so many, but we've had um, districts in the past who don't receive the award, use that as a tool to go to their district superintendents or administrators and say, hey, here, here are the gaps in my program, here are the opportunities. And they use that to improve their music program and they applied the next year and and they might not even get it the second year but they use that as a tool to improve their circumstances I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I'm sorry Tom I just wanted to follow up on that because I think that's such a really good point that people um, kind of think that way and yeah, instead and of getting frustrated yeah and yeah. don't expect it and then when you don't get it just kind of give up because it's actually more important that the people who don't get it keep working um, towards, they, towards, they use towards it, that. Yeah, towards the uh, goal. They use it, like I said, they use it as an auditing tool. Where are they? Where are some of the gaps? Where can I improve? Or, or what do I need to get yeah. to the next level? And you had mentioned a dear friend of mine in Bakersfield, California, who's uh, the supervisor there, Michael Stone, and um, very well, very well known across the country in music education. And I was just shocked when you said that they didn't they didn't get it for multiple years before they finally got it. And it just goes to show um, how a high profile program can uh, can benefit from from. Uh, yeah, I just circulate. I'll circulate a, um, an article he wrote mentioning that. And how important he thought it was to keep reapplying. 
Um, now, I, I think that that is that is key and critical. I think uh, last spring, uh, Sharon, when when we all got together, mm -hmm. kind of talked about things that could be done. Um, that was one of them. So I know that that I'll tout to to my colleagues and and the the clients that I work with that okay. So even if you didn't receive it, do it again. But there is some outlet for them to to get some data from you. If, if they yeah, if gaps. they reach. If they reach out, yes, um, okay. we won't say, you know, call us. <laughs> but, yeah, but, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah. But, but you don't want to get 7,000 phone calls? <laughs> <laughs> but absolutely, if they make the effort and want to know more, absolutely, we'll take the time. Fabulous. Since uh, I, I didn't hear from, uh, I, I know that Rob and Sarah are from the same district, right? You guys both from Evesham? I saw you guys come in the uh, on the list from the same district. Um, it, it just caught my eye because you probably probably talked about it, that this was going on. And I, I just wanted to, to know if you guys had any questions specifically, since you're my South Jersey colleagues here. And, uh, um, and thanks for joining us, by the way. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I think uh, I... I think I saw you posted it on a, a Facebook thing or whatever. So I texted Sarah and we talked about it. I'm like, yeah, let's go find out. We mentioned it. I mentioned it to our superintendent today that we were going to be going on this meeting tonight. And he was like, let me know what you need. I was like, I'll let you know tomorrow after I find out. So I don't know if we'll be able to get all the information to do it by January 31st, but we're going to, we're going to try. So we have our assistant superintendent and superintendent are on board. So Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. Well, just, yeah. you know, email me privately if, if there's some concerns or. Okay. Yeah, no, the one question I do, the one question I do have is we're only a K to eight district. So some of the high school stuff, how does that work? I haven't really looked at the survey yet. So I, I let me, I will have to, I will email you. Okay. I was going to say. Just put I'm, my I, email in the chat if you want to grab that and then we can chat offline. I'm going to say, yeah, or I can stay on it. Because that's not an issue that we've had other um, okay. K through eight districts apply and receive the award. Okay. Yeah. I think the high school that we feed into, Cherokee High School, I think, mm -hmm. won it a few years ago. So, yeah. yeah, but they're part of a different district. So, all right, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Totally brilliant. Hey, Rob, can I just follow up on that? Did Cherokee win it as a, a standalone school? Or did Lenape Regional win it for the Ford High Schools? I believe Cherokee won it as a standalone school. As I think is my own. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but I don't think it was a Lenape Regional school. I think it was just Cherokee High School. Their name's Cherokee, and they're from New Jersey. Marlton, yeah. New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm not. Don't quote me. I feel like I remember them winning this a few years ago. So, doing something. Yeah. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. I can do some research on that. Any uh, other questions for the good of the order? Well, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, this is being recorded and we will be putting it on our YouTube channel. Um, and I will actually send a link to all of you for attending so that you have it, so you can share this with any other colleagues in your district or in other districts. Um, and let's get to keep getting the word out. So I wanna thank, well, Tom, why don't you thank Sharon? Okay. <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you everyone for taking the time because uh, by being here shows that, that you care and 99.9% uh, and .9 of music people do care. Uh, as Matt just said, hey, I got I to gotta bounce. I'm, I'm setting up for a rehearsal, so I got to go. Bye. Um, it's always, it's nonstop. So thank you for that. But Sharon, I really do appreciate you spending the time with us. Uh, your knowledge and uh, is just a, is wonderful and and we'll we will continue to lean on you if we need to um but uh, we really appreciate you taking time out of your your holiday and 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 joining us so well thank you all i mean again yes i mean it's 7 40 at night and, and you're all on this call and yeah and thank you for what you do every day to support the kids in your schools and districts it's so valuable and Tom and Keith, rock stars. <laughs> hey, Sharon, you're the rock star. Uh, well, well I, I appreciate you for having me. I really do. Wonderful. Well, we have, a great, it. have a great second half of the year, everybody. Good Happy to know. Happy holidays. Enjoy. Have a good one. <laughs>